Boxing King Media in association with Box Row World Champion Sonny Edwards. It's been a while since we've caught up, Sonny. Uh, everything good? Yeah, everything good. You just caught me at the end of a strength and conditioning session. Caught me as I'm out of the way, out of the way back home, out the door. So yeah, you got me just in time. I know you've got a, a fight announcement coming out uh, later on today, so this interview will go out at the moment. The announcement comes out, so I want to quickly ask you about the the Martinez fight. I know you've spoke about it vaguely, but um, obviously, were you given a reason as to why he pulled out of that fight? Um, not like particularly. Nothing I was satisfied with. Um, they said that the zone didn't want to fight, um, but I don't really believe that being the case when we'd agreed the purse the day at the venue for six weeks. Um, I'd started camp, I'd got sparring partners in, paying nutritionists, strength coaches, travelling around, stayed training with my coach. Um, yeah, so it was a bit disappointing, to be honest. I think, more than anything, that they got into the gym um, with Reynoso. I think Martinez went back there, and after about a week training in sweatsuits, they realised that they was miles off a fight against someone like me. So I think it was just that, really. Again, bitterly disappointing, but... The moment that, that fight was gone, um, <laughs> I found out halfway through a training session, uh, through a strength conditioning session, I got a phone call expecting the fight to have been finalised and it was the fights off. I came in, got my stuff and went home. Um, spoke to Grant later and he went, oh, do you want to just leave sparring tomorrow? And I was like, nah. I came in the next day and did 12 rounds sparring. So I've been on it, do you know what I mean? There's been no, my mindset, my mentality's not changed. Um, yeah. So that's the reason you were given the fact that the zone didn't want it. Is that the official verdict from, like, say, Eddie Hearn and um, Yeah, I guess so, but I don't, I don't know. I think it's something more on um, Martinez's side. I don't know if it's something to do with wanting him to extend. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just the f everyone wanted the fight to the point of I'm not going to sit here and say Eddie didn't want the fight when I've got evidence of them paying step aside money and passing it with WBC and the IBF and paying for my visa and. All the, like that I have all that evidence um, and I, I, I could tell that when it was come it was a it was a hard conversation so yeah I guess the only blame that I really see is um, with Martinez Reynoso and their team maybe their relationship with the zone but I think that 12 fight night schedule they put out I think it was 12 fights um, from that period October December whatever it is if you saw Martinez versus Edwards on there it probably would have been the stand one of the standout fights on their schedule and promise you when, yeah, we was getting paid good money, we was getting paid a lot of money, especially for flyaways. But in the grand scheme of things, what certain fights get for the actual level of excitement and draw of the fight, apart from just having like a big name involved, like, yeah, it, it, it wasn't out of this world. So disappointing that I was ready to risk my unbeaten record, risk my world title, fly to Mexico, fly to America, fly to wherever it needed it to be, to make it happen and they still didn't but look at the um look at the the response now to martinez to me because people know and again have been proven that i am really ready to take these fights i don't say it just because it sounds good like i want to press the button now for all the big fights okay martinez doesn't want it i'm gonna have to clear up my mandatory who for me is a very hard fight and then i want baron rodriguez the other the biggest name out there probably twice the fight that martinez uh, is anyway. Uh, just a quick one on that. <coughs> Obviously, common sense tells me before Eddie here and Matchroom even discussed the fight with you, the zone have got it okay, so they will have okayed it before the negotiations took place. So clearly, there's obviously not the real reason. Yeah, so it's not, some, something's fishy, something's afoot. Um, like I said, the, the, the whole no gate negotiation period was them asking if I'm interested, us saying, yes, are you taking the piss? Of course, we're interested. Them sending an offer for a date, me counter offering of £100,000 extra and them accepting. Six weeks later, the fight's off, so. And with regards to, because uh, I, I read some stuff online that, you know, that it, because that fell through, Eddie was going to put you in a matchroom show. Was that ever in the talks? Nah, that's just um, people on Twitter and YouTube and the internet that probably don't have any access to boxing outside of press passes they can get, thinking that they're putting that. I, 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 saw, the, I saw the first person to start that, and they even said that because... Was it? Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't remember. Um, but I've seen it, I've seen it. Because I see every tweet that gets said about me. People don't realise that. Like, my ADHD, borderline autistic brain reads everything that's said about me. Do you know what I mean? I'm just a weirdo. Um, but yeah, he, someone, someone said it. 
and they said it along the lines of because he was meant to be fighting on a thing he could be on there and that sort of spiralled out to our rumour that he's fighting in London on his own card um, which as you know it's not that it's um, fighting the Probellum card Sheffield Arena um, a homecoming as such and I have teas with that um, obviously it's kind of like my second home I've spent my whole adult life here in Sheffield I moved when I was 18 originally for university so yeah, I'm looking forward to bringing a big night of boxing. Um, the undercard is stacked with good local to talent. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come to it because you just said Sheffield there. I was looking on Boxtech. You, you debuted in Spain. You fought in, fought in Glasgow. You fought in London numerous times. You fought in Belfast. Last couple in Dubai. And now Sheffield. Yeah, all over the place. All over the place. And I will fight anywhere. And if I had my way, I'd have been fighting in Mexico or America my next fight. So it, I didn't ever want to become a boxer just to, you know, headlock my hometown arena or local venue. Ever, I kind of skipped out on the international experience of travelling around the world with the amateurs and now I'm at world level. I really genuinely want my world title and titles in the future, hopefully, to take me to every corner of the world. But I see it as like I'm the champion from this country and that whether it's biggest over here, it's biggest over there, you get up, you travel over there and you challenge the best over there. That's how great fights are made. That is how you know, championed fighters from different sides of the world, built up to the point of where their people don't think they can get beat and then putting it all along the line. I think that's how you make a country and a nation proud of a fighter, I think. And I'm willing to do that. You won't just see me defending against British, 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 because no one from Britain will fight me. Um, so I'll fight the best in the Philippines, I'll fight the best in Mexico, I'll fight the best in Nicaragua, I'll fight the best anywhere in between. It doesn't matter to me. I want my fight, my, my world titles and my career to spread the four corners of the world. I've already got plans and dreams of going to Japan on New Year's. I want to do Mexico, still want to do that. I want to go even further. I thought I've done Dubai, I've done this side of the world. And I'll take it everywhere, man, because boxing's, boxing's a global sport. And there's, like, I don't live in the mindset that 10,000 British fans in an arena is worth more than 10,000 or 20,000 somewhere else just because it, they're British people, do you know what I mean? And I feel like some people get that mentality where they'll see like viewing figures in certain areas of the world and because it's not direct Britain, they, they think it doesn't matter. When a person's a person, eyes are eyes. Um, I want to leave a legacy that spreads, so I need to set the, the, the seed of my career all around the world. I don't want to be sort of finite to when I want to beat the best in Nicaragua right now at my weight. Um, and then Bam Rodriguez, the best in America, and after that, the best in Japan. Like, I just want to keep beating the country's best of the best fighters around the world. That's all I want to do. Well, talking of which, uh, your opponent, Felix Alvarado, just quickly, is, that, is it a mandatory defence or is that um, a voluntary? Yeah, mandatory. Bear in mind, um, he was the IBF light flyweight world champion, but two fights ago, he didn't lose the title. He vacated to move up weight and in the press release of him moving up he said he wants me I was a champion at the time yeah I think he's had one fight at flyweight in the interim and now he's got me um, Sandoval was meant to be my mandatory next and he pulled out the day the day before the um, purse bids got called or the mandatory got called sorry um, and yeah to their credit uh, Alvarado and his team seemingly the moment that um it's only been within the last two weeks that the Martinez fight has been off. So the moment that that's been off, the contact was made and we didn't have to wait and mess about with purse bids or leaving it, leaving it and getting delayed or stalled. We got on the phone, look, we want to fight around this time. When do you want to fight? They was okay with it. Look, we want to fight in this venue. I wanted to bring a show back to Sheffield. Um, and yeah, it happened and it, and it all got made within a week. So props to them. He's a, he's a true champion. And a challenge I'm relishing because for the first time in my professional boxing career, it was six, seven years now, um, 18 to so this is my 19th fight, world titles, British titles, all in between. This is the first opponent that I can genuinely say with any sort of conviction has looked at me and headed towards the fight with me. And I, I, would, I would challenge anyone to, so, to, to argue anyone else that I thought or otherwise. Well, a mention on Felix, uh, I'm pretty sure you probably know these stats already. So he's, he's what, 11 on box rec. On paper, I don't know if you know this or not, but he's got the highest knockout ratio in the top 20 on box rec at your weight. Uh, he's 38 fights, 33 knockouts, uh, of which 31 are inside the six rounds. That's that's a pretty crazy record, that. And uh, you're willing to put yourself, put it all on the line against somebody who, who's going to come in to knock your head off. Yeah, but we can do a lot of things with stats. 
He's had 40 fights and he's been in the ring twice and not been a winner. He's been in the ring 38 times as the winner. But all that 33 knockouts suggests to me is, yeah, you can look at that. I think he's a big puncher. Most fighters are when they get to this level. But what we do definitely know is there's 33 people that's matched against him that couldn't see the final bell. Couldn't even see the first six rounds. So I could look into that and suggest that, oh, he's a massive puncher, I should be scared. Or I can look at it and think, oh, there's two ways to beat him at least, and there's none to beat me just yet. He's crude, he's strong, he's aggressive. He tries, you know, approach him with, with fire, ferocity, tenacity. I'm like the, the, the sheet of ice that just puts out. So that style to me and them stats, Maruti had similar and he's a world champion as well, multiple times and a much more resume. Yeah, he's been a world champion and yes, he's a very good fighter. Yes, he's a knockout artist. But I genuinely think I'm a generational talent. Not, not budded yet. I don't think I've sprouted yet, but generally I think that's what I'll get to. And I think I've had 18 fights and I've skipped through all the levels straight to, to world level and defended twice, my third defence. Bear in mind, my first, my, my world title win was against the number one in the division, Ring Magazine, unbeaten in 13 years, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. The second, my, ne my first offence, sorry, was my mandatory that got ordered. My next fight after that was the, the highest ranked of the IBF. And then my third fight after that, my third defence after that, is again, the highest ranked. So Mamma was the highest ranked. No, Maruti was the highest ranked in the IBF. Then Mamma was the high, high, highest ranked after me with the IBF. Then Wazim was ranked highest, and now Alvarado is. So I'm literally taking the top challenger every single time. So I wanted to point out how good this guy is, because he fought recently on the zone, and he literally just walked through his opponent. He, he looks really tall for the weight. I think he's an inch taller than you, but he's, um, he's got really long arms. Yeah, like he, he's a bit of a beast. Like, he genuinely, but... Do you think I sit here and look at a good fighter and, and get scared and move away from a fight? That's not my style. The best fighters that I see is the fight that I want. So I've seen that he's a genuine, legit threat. He's, a, he's not even a contender, he's a champion in his own right. He did not lose his world title belt that he spent his whole life gaining in the ring. He left on the, he didn't even lose on the scales, he just moved up weight class. So in his head, he's still a world champion. He's not lost. He's coming to collect what's rightfully his because he's just been the IBF champion. He's moved up weight and he thinks he's the IBF champion still. And I have to let him know that. <laughs> Even though we're only slightly bigger, that the flyweights is a bit of a different kettle of fish than the light flyweights. Even though they're killers down there, believe me, all, all the all the light fly all the flyweights know the light flies are killers because they're pretty much the same size as us lot, but are willing to boil down and kill themselves and do that little bit extra to get the opportunities and to get that world title and to build. Do you know what I mean? They have to do it and they're willing to do it. I think people will get to see how big he is when, when he comes down for this you know, press conference that may be happening in a few weeks. Uh, and on the way, in, you, you could clearly see from you know, the footage of him on the zone that he's huge for the weight. So it's going to be an interesting challenge for you and it probably, would you say, it's on paper your most difficult fight? Who knows? On paper, Murray should be. Murray would probably be him. If they fought, even before he retired. If he's retired, I don't know. Um, I think that, I think his style, he's, he, he's very good at what he does, he finds good openings, but I think he's very crude, I think he has to manoeuvre him, his body, consciously every time he does anything. Um, he shows what he's doing, he leans in, he throws similar shots and he repeats patterns and there's a lot that I think I can work with. Um, and you got to remember, the, the, the belief I have in myself, any time I'm watching any footage of anyone, I just blank out what they're doing and who they're doing it in front of. Imagine me for a split second in front of them and you know that's a different fight. We do not know what he's going to be like trying to land a target on me. We've seen him miss loads of shots and land loads of shots against people that don't know how to move their feet and stand there in front of him. Do we know how he's going to land when there's been people that fought me for 10-12 rounds and landed 30 shots on CompuBox? 30 shots in 10-12 rounds, half an hour of fighting and most of them are little jabs, scuffing shots, barely count. Like, I have that level of elusiveness, so... And when I just see 33 knockouts on the record, guess what I'm doing? 
Well, it's going to be interesting uh, either way. And the reason I wanted to point out his credentials is because I hope the fans give you the credit for fighting him because we know you can manoeuvre different fights. You could, you could have took an easier touch. I know he's the mandatory, but there's ways that, and means that of getting out of fights. So credit to you for fighting the, the, the best available challenger. And uh, that's been pretty fair. That. And, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your ass because I, I researched it. He's the best available challenger you, you could potentially fight next. Yeah, but one, again, proving what I've always said, I'm not in the business of easy fights. Two, I would never do any creative matchmaking to fucking avoid uh, a mandatory outside of making a unification fight happening. It's not my style. Um, vacating my IBF world title is not in the slightest sense of in my mindset. Um, only if there was an alluring option to step into, I wouldn't just, oh, I don't want to fight him, let's see what's there up there for me. No. Um, and yeah, I need the big fights, I need the hard fights, but I don't get, I, I don't, probably won't, don't even need the, the credit. I probably won't ever get it. Um, it's easier to not give me credit, it's easier to discredit what I do and do so easy because you can't really understand it. Like a lot of fighters even, but a lot of spectators must look at me fight and think, how do I actually do it for that many rounds? And, stay that one step ahead and just keep slightly making a miss and like they always say like I don't punch harder than so why can't people beat me why can't it even get to the end of 12 rounds and there be one question of any of my fights has there been one question mark any of my fights have there been one question mark when that final bell went who's won it and if there has been I would literally argue I would disagree because I don't think there's been a single one. I don't think there's been a single fight that after four or five rounds, it's not very obvious what's happening for the rest of the fight. And that's been at every single level. Doesn't matter. And I do it in a kind of similar fashion against the British levels and the international levels. And I have a world level. It's not really changed because what I do, I, I, I struggle to see how these fighters beat me at this point. I agree with you. I think it's about time certain people gave you credit for, for what you're doing. Um, I just want to move on quickly. So people, you know, one, one thing I will say, a lot of people get a lot more credit for doing a hell of a lot less. A hell of a lot less. I know perspectives are everything and there's context and, you know, just sometimes there's hype trains, etc., etc. But we, I could sit here, I'm not going to, but I could sit here and probably name 15, 20 fighters in fights that have got a big amount of credit praise for, I don't know, beating someone that's passed it or, do you know what I mean? In, 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 in ways and at levels far, far below anything I've ever done. And I'm the best in the world at my weight and every other champion my weight is scared to fight me. Scared, avoided. Definitely, and talking about uh, people being scared to fight you, you've, you've got uh, people queuing up from YouTube channels wanting to spy you. Uh, we spoke about this idea off camera. How about uh, we bring Fabio Tanga back and he spars the uh, the guy that wants to spy you recently? That would be interesting. I'd like to see that. Oh, I don't, no comment on all that. But in all seriousness, you know what it is, yeah? The only reason I kind of reacted the other way that I did because I feel like that's it's got into a lot of boxing media people's heads since that. Oh, go spar a boxer, pull it on. I think it always, always has been. People have been doing this, you know what I mean? I think um, Charlie Zelenoff and stuff like that was the original um, trailblazers in this uh, demographic. But I think they've sort of realised, oh, channel not doing too well, come spar the world champ, pull it on there, you know what I mean? But that, I don't even want to say his name, that no-smoke boxing geezer. Like, he's been messaging half the lads in the gym, like, essays and that talking about £100, £500 wages, um, ringing other people around, messaging me constantly on publicly Twitter. Um, and I went, all right, then come down tomorrow, one o'clock, I'll do rounds, I've got eight rounds with Thomas, and then you jump in after. Um, and then he started saying, oh, can you do seven o'clock on a Saturday night? No. What, what? Like, do you not understand that outside of fucking entertaining dickheads on Twitter and trying to help boost your profile on your social media page, like, I've actually got shit to do. I've got my kids this weekend, first and foremost. I'm not dragging them out again to watch me spa. Um, and then he's saying, oh, Friday, 7.30 p.m. Are you fucking serious? Like, what world of cloud cuckoo land do you think, yeah, that me, six weeks, literally six weeks today, have a world title fight? And he's not even in camp on Friday at 7.30 p.m. would choose to spend his time with someone that's probably got fucking some borderline learning difficulties because he fucking seems off-key as fuck to be messaging, messaging, messaging. Like, it's weird as fuck. Like, 
come down to the gym. But now I'm just gonna treat him like a dickhead if I ever do bump into him because it's just it's low key disrespectful at the same time. The other lads, international boxing news, whatever they're called. They was alright, because it didn't start with them coming down and trying to spar. They asked, come down for an interview, it was him and them. He was hitting the bags a bit, was having a little laugh with him. And then he jumped in some body sparring, because there was some other body sparring going on. That's all it was, asking me video. But yeah, we had a little fun. But I'm not about fucking coming and doing wages and that, because I'll say, get in the ring, 12 threes, no head guard, no cameras, and I'm going to fucking knock you out. And then all of a sudden I'm the bad guy, but stop coming to the ring to spar me. Do you know what I mean? Like, what I might start doing, yeah, is like once a month, yeah. Why do you make them spar each other? So, like, this... Ah, do you know what I think I'm going to do? Maybe once a month or just every now and then, yeah? Maybe in, in the good weather. Set, like, a, a, a boxing ring in the middle of somewhere, yeah? And then just put the location. If you want to come down and spar me, everyone can just come. And I'll just do, like, a hundred rounds back to back to back to back of all, all comers. I might just start doing that and start being, like, a... Um, you know, like them old prize fighters, like spectacles, where they would get anyone to challenge them in the thing to try and knock them out in three minutes. And if you can, you get a thousand pounds. And if you can't, you know what I mean? You pay the twenty pound entry for you, whatever. Well, we'll see if we can get that uh, done. Um, Sonny, as always, we've dragged on twenty plus minutes now. So uh, unless you've got anything else to say, I'm going to let you go, man. You got a big fight to prepare for. Um, yeah, I've been preparing. Um, um, I'm looking forward to being back. It's been a little bit frustrating with everything that's happened, and I've said that. But um, I want to shout out Probellum. I want to shout out my team, my training team, um, my strength, my nutritionist. Um, helped keep me sane and half on it, at least, during these times. Um, I've had a big, long run-up to this, so I should be looking my best come fight now. The card, I can't wait for it to get announced. I don't know what I can, can't, should, shouldn't. This is going to go out after the announcement. I know, so. but I'm not sure t t t today what's getting announced. Okay. But I obviously know that it's going to be Sonny Edwards defending. That's Felix Alvarado, the mandatory from Nicaragua, 38-2 and two with 33 knockouts. Do you know what's mad? I'm trying to work it out, yeah. He's got one more fight than me without a knockout, yeah. And I've got knockouts. Wins. He's got 38 wins, five non-knockouts. I've got four knockouts. <laughs> if I knocked him out, that's a fucking. What's that about a thousand to one on the odds? Do you reckon? I'm assuming it'd be something ridiculous, but I think the common sense is Sonny Edwards' unanimous sorry, decision. Back, 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 quickly, sorry, before I lose the track. Yeah, I know the undercard's gonna be great. Mm. I've helped put it together. Um, Shabazz versus Jack Bateson um, for the WBO Intercontinental, I believe, um, and the British title final eliminate an undercard. That's gonna be a great fight. Local, um, two popular, popular lads from um, kind of surrounding areas as well. Lees and Stoke, I believe, Shabazz, but with a big um, following in the community. So that's going to be a great fight. There's um, Olympians looking to go on it again. I don't know who, who and what I can say. And, um, yeah, there's some other fights that people that are on to, to, to my career and the people around me are on there as well. So I tried to make it a good card with the team, with, uh, with Pro Bellum that, you know, that it gives some good fighters from Sheffield who have probably been dying out for an opportunity um, that they haven't really got the, 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 the nods when the big promoters come in town and they sort of fill the cards with just, you know, fighters from out of the city and then they wonder why there's 2,000 people with 1,000 free tickets in Sheffield Arena, do you know what I mean? Um, local talent, local chances, getting the, the city excited, um, trying to promote it, push it out there well and... Yeah, hopefully generate a nice support. I think I'll do well in Sheffield. I've been my whole adult life here, and I think I think it's going to be a good night of boxing. And like you said, probably one of the hardest nights of my boxing career. Well, I wish you all the best, and I'm looking forward to fight night, and uh, we'll catch up soon, closer to the show.